Hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Facebook Live. This is our weekly opportunity to come together and join in as a community. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to San Diego Unified Facebook Live. It's good to have people starting to log in and join us on this Monday morning for our regular opportunity to get together. Nice to see people slowly starting to log in and join our Facebook Live this morning on Monday morning, June 8th. I know some families, I hope you had a, a good weekend. And tomorrow, I, I know is the last day of what would have been our traditional schools. I got a really great video from one of our schools this morning having their graduation. That was great. Thank you for sending that. Principal Irene Hightower sent that to me this morning from her school. Hi, Elsa. Good morning. Thank you for joining. Anthony, hello. Good morning to you. Hello from Library Land. Elizabeth and Jean Wong, nice to see you. Good morning. Hi, Lolly. Good to see you. Happy Monday, Michelle and Paula Hall. Nice to see you, Paula. Well, actually, I can't see you. You can see me. Welcome. Nice to see you. Uh, I'm going to just, a few more folks are joining. Nice to see everyone coming in. Hi, Donna. I'm going to get to the questions in just a minute. Um, I want to remind people if we haven't checked our FAQs page, that's still up and running and we continue to add to it as time goes on and we get a lot of questions from the FAQ page we find from our chat here. So it's good to get questions and then we move them over to our FAQs. I know a lot of people weren't joining today. That's a good point. Lolo, you said many are having end of the year celebrations virtually at this time. So I realized that I've gotten some pictures of some of them. Today's Facebook Live is going to last 30 minutes, and during this time, I try to answer as many questions as possible. We don't answer questions after the event, but during the 30 minutes, we answer as many as we possibly can. And again, go to San Diego Distance Learning.org, where you can see um, some of our the FAQs, the slash FAQ, you can see the FAQs there. So I want to start off this conversation this morning by just saying once again how proud I am of the incredibly responsible and well-organized protests that um, we've seen our students and our community engage in uh, in following the tragic and the senseless death of George Floyd in police custody. I know that many of our students have been participating and I want to give a special shout out to the class of 2020 seniors who sacrificed many school rites of passage this year from their prom to their traditional June commencement, commencement ceremonies to everything in between. So I just want to say to our class of 2020, as you get ready for your next chapters in life, whether it's college, career, military, other adventure, you will be forever linked to the class of 2020. And for everyone not graduating, I want to remind you that we have a special board meeting that's scheduled for June 16th. As you know, the state budget is scheduled for adoption the day before on June 15th, and we plan to do our meeting the next day after the very next day so we can talk about our plans going forward for the fall and the key elements of our plan moving forward for how will schools open what will it look like right now literally as we speak the state superintendent tony thurman is releasing guidance today the budget's coming out next monday and next tuesday we have our workshop to get into the details but the key elements of our plan the key elements of the plan is to make sure that we have predictability and stability for our families because we know that you need that. We know that's what our families need. We know the employers need to know that. So that's that's coming up very shortly. Lots of new news coming out today about that that gives us more information. And we're not sitting and waiting for the information. Our plans are moving forward. And I've just discussed when those uh, next meetings will be so you can hear how we're moving forward on these things. So. Let me go to try to catch up with some of the questions. Good morning. Thank you all for joining. Those of you that have just joined, um, appreciate everybody. Uh, we've our, Let's see, Elizabeth, thank you for joining. You said, will libraries have money to support diverse collections of each school? Student needs need books to support them during recent events. Absolutely, that's so important. There's some very good literature out there. We've been posting our, like I refer people to our youth advocacy page for the lessons and the resources that we're presenting and preparing for our students to be able to 
um, log, uh, log into the youth advocacy page for some of the lessons that we've created. Appreciate that. Um, Dale is asking if there's any news as to when you'll allow churches to meet in schools again. That guidance from the California Department of Health and the guidance from um, California Department of Ed, I, that's all coming out right now today. And that's related to being able to open up our campuses. You'll see some of the similar rules that are required around social distancing and six feet apart and temperature taking and personal protective equipment. All of that is outlined in the state guidance. So our team is processing that state guidance so we understand those rules. And as soon as we know, Dale, we will let you know. It's getting very close to the time for us to be able to talk about that, though I appreciate it. Morning, Lisa. Thank you for hosting. You said thank you for hosting the event. Well, I say thank you for joining the event. It's good to have you here. Uh, let's see. Laura, nice to see you again. Laura Lopez Hudson, one of our fabulous teachers. You said you're so happy to hear that our students will be able to comp keep computers over the summer. They can, um, somebody earlier asked, that's great that the kids can keep the computer over the summer, but can, what, what can they do is their work. And Laura, one of the teachers jumped in and said they can still access all of our online programs and also access our extracurricular art formats. And we'll also, we have some special summer challenge projects that we've just posted. So take a look at those um, and we can put a link to that in the chat here as well. Liz Duvall, good morning, wonderful principal from Central. Nice to have you. I'm so proud of you, Liz. You're doing the, your own Facebook Live for the Central families, and I know that means a lot to them. You're doing that in Spanish and English, and I've been able to log in and see some of yours. I don't see them when you're live, but I see them later. So kudos to you, Ms. Duvall. What a great principal in Central. So lucky to have you. Nice to have you here this morning. Um, Oh, yay, Barbara Reynolds says, it's nice to see you too. Well, no, I can't see you, Barbara, but you said nice to see me, and it's nice to know you're here. You said your daughter's graduating from Mira Mesa High School, and you're so excited. So are we. We're so proud of her, and principal at Mira Mesa High School did a beautiful tribute for his students. He hand wrote the names of every single graduate on a wall and just did this heartfelt message. If you haven't seen the message from the principal, from Mira Mesa High School. I highly recommend it. He's got the YouTube video of it and they just did everything to make the kids feel so special. So Barbara, I hope your graduate feels special and I'm glad you're excited about what you see happening. Uh, Roosevelt Johnson, you've joined us. Thank you, fabulous teacher from uh, um, Wilson Middle School. I'm so glad that you joined us and uh, my heartfelt um, condolences to you. I know you've had two recent um, deaths of people that were very close to you. You've been posting those on Facebook, so I'm just sending my love and my heart goes to you this morning. Truly, you are just a shining light and you inspire me. And actually, somebody that was just asking about books for students to read during this time, Roosevelt Johnson, if you're not friends with him on Facebook, he posted a great list of student literature and resources that, that are great to read in addition to the ones that are posted by our youth advocacy department. So. Good for Roosevelt, thanks for joining. Oh, I got teared up thinking about you. Um, Gabriel, nice to have you. Gabriel Hueso, thank you for joining. Toby Pace, good to have you here. Nice to have you joining, Toby. You've been killing it with your social media and getting out there with your students and just leading with heart for your community. Your school is so lucky to have you. Really appreciate having you here. Um, Claire, you said, thanks for doing this. Do I have a timeline for the decision? on how to go back to school will go, distance learning versus in-person learning. That's really important, Claire. That's why I just kind of went over the timeline of state guidance came out literally at 10 o'clock this morning and the state budget is approved on the 15th. We might hear a little bit early this week, but they're required to adopt it by the 15th of June. And the 16th is our board workshop. And I think just what's important for people to know, the bottom line is that um, we need stability and we need predictability and there will be options for in-person and for distance learning because some families need those options. So what doesn't change is in school and out of school options, but we have not changed our, our timeline in terms of when does school start. School starts on August 31st. We have not changed that. I have heard that some districts are changing their days that they're starting and their start times, but that is not something that we have changed. Um, Okay, let's see, Sarah, that's a very sweet comment. Thank you, back to you. She said, thanks for supporting humanity. This is really us in this um, as a whole community and I love our community, our beloved community. Nice to see that comment. Um, Maria, you wanted to know, 
will we as parents be able to watch or participate in that? I think you might be talking about the June 16th board workshop. And if that's what you're talking about, Maria, yes, that's a public meeting. And the links to our, our public our public meetings are always public meetings, our board meetings. This is a workshop. And the link for that will be on our district, is probably already on our district webpage. But if not, it's the Board of Education and our public meetings link to live stream and to watch those. Yes, you can see that. So um, I think that's what you were asking about. If you could watch that, if it was something else, let me know. And Helena Parker, you said, do you think there will be parent volunteers allowed on campus at Miramar Ranch? Parents teach art, character education, help teachers with grading. Can't imagine how the school could operate with all, all that help. Yes, Helena, you are so right. Parents are critical and do so much wonderful support to our schools. And the guidance that came out from Superintendent, State Superintendent Tony Thurman today did address entering campus entrance and egress and regress and um, kind of guidelines that schools need to think about following. So we take that state guidance and we now, now need to apply it here locally with our local health officials, Dr. Wilma Wooten and San Diego County's health metrics and health um, requirements. So we take the state guidance and then localize it. That's what our governor has been about is de um, determinism is localism. He talks about making um, those decisions locally, but there was some guidance in the state document about parent volunteers. So of course, we understand the critical importance uh, of that and we'll have to figure out um, how to best do that so that we stay within the health guidelines. It's a really important question and it's one that we are um, very connected to wanting to figure out. Maria Nichols, good morning. Nice to see you. Actually, Maria, I was just thinking of you this weekend because I was using this beautiful book that you gave me from one of my favorite authors, Donald Graves. It says, let the children teach us about what they know. And this is just a beautiful journal. And I'm glad to see you here, Maria. I was using this as my journal this weekend. So I was just thinking of you. Nice to see you on Facebook Live this morning. Thanks for joining. Hey, Amina, nice to see you. Hope your son is doing well and your family. Uh, let's see, continuing down, Alicia wants to know if there's any news on sports. Well, the state guidelines that came out this morning was very quiet on the uh, on sports. It only had one sentence in the back in the FAQs around CIF, and it just said more to come. There was not a lot of clear direction on that. The only thing that I've been hearing about sports is contact sports are definitely not recommended. There may be some sports that are not contact sports that people are considering. Again, it would be within the health guidelines that we're going to be required to follow. So we all know how important sports are. and We know sports are a key connection. So um, that's really good um, that we make sure that we get some clarity around that sooner rather than later. And that's a statewide, but also a local conversation with CIF and, and districts. But know that as we make our decisions about sports, we know how important it is for so many of our kids. So. I want to say a shout out to our board member, Dr. Mike McQuarrie just joined us. Thank you, Dr. Mike, for joining this morning. And I heard a very special guest has just joined. I need to say a special good morning and welcome to my very own brother, Charlie Albert Cohen Jr., handsome gentleman. That's what Charlie's nickname is. I want to say good morning to my brother, Charlie. Many of you have heard me talk about Charlie. Um, he grew up in San Diego Unified Schools with an IEP, he's developmentally disabled, and he's watching with his staff this morning. I think he's with Robert, so if Robert's there, good morning, and it's good to see you joining this morning, Charlie. Nice to have you on this on my Facebook Live. Uh, let's see. I want to continue looking down here. Um, yes, Dale says, we're happy to follow all the rules, and we can't wait for our churches to get back in. Yes, we understand that. Good morning, Laura. Thank you for joining Laura Enriquez and Jessica, uh, I can't pronounce your last name. You said great for online programs. Yes, we'll continue all the resources that we put up. I keep promoting the visual and performing arts resources because if you haven't seen those, those are amazing. And those are things you can do all summer long. And if you also have physical activity, the physical education department has some great movement programs on there and those you can use all summer long. So, and just check out our, our chats. I mean, sorry, our, our our challenge projects that we're also setting up. Derek Merchinson joined. Thank you, Derek, principal from Zamorano. Good morning. Nice to have you. I was really enjoying your posts on Facebook this weekend and the caravan that you were part of. It's good to see you. Jessamine Patterson, you said you were worried about your fourth grade and you said, thanks, thank goodness. Um, I'm glad that helped. Liz Duval, thank you again. Let's see, continue to scroll. I just missed a bunch of comments 
delete are, are up higher and it's not letting me scroll back up so if i miss something i'm trying to get back to it and i can't so i'm going to keep going um lolly you wanted to know will kids be able to attend school five days a week without virtual learning in the fall that's a question everybody wants to know. We all want to be open as much as possible. Like I said, it's stability and predictability is the thing that is most important. And we are starting on August 31st and we know our employers want to know that. They want to know are, are adults able to go back to work when kids are able to go back to school. And for some kids that, want, that need to stay home and continue learning because of health issues, we need to provide that option. And we're very, getting very close on the 16th at that board workshop. We'll be drilling down on all of those details. And one, we know that there's a big desire for some families who, are, who feel like it's gonna be healthy and safe for them to do that, that they wanna come as much as possible. So that's as important to you, Lolly, as it is to all of us. We appreciate that. Christina is giving a shout out to Mason Elementary staff, saying proud of Mason staff. Thanks for saying that, Christina. All of those nice shout outs that people are giving to their schools and to their teachers and their principals and the staff that's supporting them during this time. I've received some really beautiful emails from people. And please know any of the chats that you put in here that are shout outs for your staff. I appreciate hearing them. And then we send them directly to the staff too so that they hear from you as well. It's nice that you recognize them. So that's very, very nice. Um, yes, <laughs> Lolly is said, Jessamine, everyone has that same question about can we please just say that we can have everybody back every day and the health guidelines are very serious around how to follow those guidelines and get everybody back and get them back five days a week. So that's, that's what we would like to see, but it's all about the guidelines and being able to follow those. Um, Dale Huntington said there's lots of little free libraries in the community as well. That's a good pro tip over there as you walk around free libraries with the books around. Um, Christy Flint, welcome. You joined us. You said two counselors from Morse are here with the big heart. And Roosevelt, I'm glad you heard my message. Um, let's see, Daniela from Central. Nice to see you joining us, Daniela. Thank you for joining this morning. Um, Carlin, you asked a good question. Will students be eating breakfast and lunch in the cafeteria or in the classroom? That is a really important question too with the health guidelines and the document that just came out by the Department of Ed had some guidelines in there about that as well. In that guidelines, um, it talked about not being able to have salad bars anymore, the self-serve salad bars that we typically have, those won't be allowed, those won't be um, available, but we'll figure out other ways. There might be some in-classroom eating and some depending on how, how large of a cafeteria you have, how far can we space you apart? You know the, the rules on social distancing, just like in restaurants, if you see restaurants, you gotta have tables six feet apart and most of our cafeterias are not set up like that. So it's important that we figure out how to do that in a way that um, follows the rules that we have to follow. So let's see, continue to, I don't know how come I keep missing some of the messages, scroll up and I can't go back up to it. So trying to catch up with all of you here. Um, yes, a, a consistency and predictability is exactly what people want. So that's, that's what we want, people wanna know consistency and predictability, what can we do to make sure that that happens? And once we know that, then we're able to make our plans for the fall and then we're getting very close to that. Um, Anthony wanted to know if there's any way to download or receive a report card that we normally get with grades. You've been given access to PowerSchool, but there's no way from what you could see to generate the download and report in the same format we normally get. You said we can't get the grades from PowerSchool, but it's in raw form and now I just lost the rest of your comment. I'm not sure about that. We will make sure we get an answer to that. And you see the comment from, and somebody will get back to you on that question. Thanks for asking that about the report cards. My brother, Charlie says, hi, best sister in the whole wide world. That's a little routine that we have. We always say best brother in the whole wide world. And Charlie's, that's my brother. Uh, let's see, um, good morning. This is Megan Hicks, now that just disappeared. Um, you watched my day in the life video as a DHH teacher. Yes, thank you, Megan, for doing that. I appreciate that. And sending love from my little and I at Clay Elementary. Hi, Ashley, and parent from Clay. It's nice to see you joining and sending love. Um, let's see, thank you, everybody else. Continue to look at that. San Diego Met staff, more counselors said they're missing their students right now. I appreciate that. I know your students are missing you too. Um, Claire's asking if they 
state issued guidelines for how to have instrumental and choral music in the fall. I did not see music addressed in the state guidelines, but music and arts are very important to our district. So that's something that we'll be considering moving forward. Um, so that's really important. Um, updates regarding primetime selections. I don't have any updates on that at this point. Um, let's see, continue. I'm going as fast as I can to catch up on your questions. Uh, thank you everybody for posting such good questions. Congratulations to all the grads, but most especially OB elementary fourth graders for catching the wave to fifth grade. Yay, Katie, shouting out to OB elementary. Sounds like that is great. And that's your slogan over there. Um, Rosaria Diaz says kudos to the school district and Alice Bernie. They've helped my daughter so much. The IEP team is amazing. The teachers, principal, just everyone is so dedicated to the students and the distance learning process. We will make sure Rosario to send that not only to Bernie, but to our um, special education department because they've really worked to customize and make sure that the needs are being met during these unprecedented times. Appreciate that. Familia Castro, you ask how am I holding up? Always working for everyone else, but tell us how you're keeping sane. I'm keeping sane by connecting with all of you. Thanks for asking about that. I, it's an honor to do the work and I care so much about our children and about our community and about making sure that we're here for our families during this time. So thanks for asking about that. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see, are there any plans for parents that want to continue full-time distance learning and still be enrolled in the San Diego Unified School System? That's from Lester Kotcha. There's some families that have given us feedback saying this distance learning is working for us and we want to keep doing it. They have been told by their employer or their self-employed that they want to keep working from home and they want to have this option continue. So, or, and they might have students with immune. We have um, 9,000 students with asthma and 1,000 students that are medically fragile. So we know that that's really important that some people are able to continue the distance learning. And we also know that we need to improve upon that. So the improvements that we'll make on distance learning, some of the things that we've learned, what's been working, what hasn't worked, and what needs to improve going forward with that, we were, that's what we're working on. And we'll be talking about that also at the June 16th workshop. So to answer that question, yes, we will be making that option available for people that want to continue that, either want to continue that or frankly feel that they're required because of their own health conditions and either some family member or the student themselves might be um, have an immune uh, system that's compromised. So that's it. Um, Lisa is new to San Diego. Welcome Lisa to San Diego. We have some families that have moved to San Diego throughout the summer and they've been transferred here or for whatever reason, and she's wanting to know if she can um, enroll and be a part of our distance learning. Yes, you can get a hold of enrollment options and we can help you sign up and get a computer checked out to you and get you enrolled in your school. So welcome to the San Diego Unified family and we can absolutely enroll you. We usually have somebody from enrollment options on this on Facebook Live, so we'll be sure to reach out to you or go to our FAQs page and go to the enrollment options section and we'll make sure to get you connected. So appreciate that question. Um, let's see, continue Muir, some shout out, some love from Muir Elementary. We'll share that with Muir and Paula Hall. Thank you for this live conversation with us all. Thank you, Paula. And yay to Walker Elementary. And um, let's see, continue down the questions. Will there be distant learning options? Should, should parents feel uncomfortable with having their children physically attend school in August? Geo, I, th I think I just answered somebody else asked that question, so just answered that too. Green Elementary School, shout out with the green heart. I love that. Mira Hamesa High School from Amber Davis, a shout out with the red heart. Toller, I love all these shout outs to the schools with the color of, of their school, with the blue hearts for Toller Elementary. Um, what about outdoor classes at local parks? San Diego has great weather year, year round. Familia Castro. That is something that the state guidance has talked about. And when we think about physical distancing and what's required, using our outdoor spaces does put San Diego in a better place than some parts of the country where it's gonna be difficult to have outdoor learning spaces. So that is definitely something that we're considering to give as much in-person learning within the guidelines as possible. Lolo is saying hats off to Ms. Leonardo, first year teacher in a fourth and fifth grade combo bilingual education at Juarez Elementary. Way to go, Miss Leonardo. That's an awesome challenge that you have and sounds like you're getting some love from the families. Thanks for mentioning that. Lola, that, I appreciate that. Sine, Sine was saying eating in the classroom brings more bugs and pests around. 
Yes, and she says they will need to be more custodial. If you see the state guidelines that came out today, the first, I want to say, 10 pages is health and safety guidelines. And then those first 10 pages, it talks about the need for cleanliness, the need for sanitizing, the need for hand washing and face coverings, and when those are needed, and when you're entering spaces. Um, kind of all of those guidelines are in that document that just came out this morning. And the idea that we would need more custodial and more cleaning is something we've been very public about from the beginning. Many of you have seen our advocacy letters to the state level, and you've seen, and at the federal level, that opening our schools is going to cost more money, not less money, when we think about additional counselors and nurses and custodial and the physical distancing and the per personal protective equipment. All of that is needed, which is why those are very real costs. They're not just hypothetical. They're, and the guidance today um, is very clear on that. So we understand that we need more of that. So appreciate you put it, shining a light on that and helping us with our advocacy. Um, Rosario says SCPA said their school year was in October. Do you know anything about that? Certain schools can go back at different times. No, I do not know anything about that. I'm not sure why SCPA says that. Sometimes principal from SCPA is on this, so maybe he can help clarify. I'm not sure where that came from because our start date is August 31st, and I've not heard of any other plans besides that. Um, the plans for social distancing, Karen Ochoa, um, we are looking at, you want to know what the plans for social distancing is in the fall, and that depends in the classroom, and then outside in larger spaces in the cafeteria, we have to have plans for all of that available to our students, and so um, they have to be six feet apart, and so you have to measure out in the classroom how that would happen and how to make sure that they are six feet apart, and it might mean moving some things around in a classroom, so appreciate that. Um, and yes, Crystal is saying she's glad to hear that there's going to be options for the fall. And what's the plan to maintain the academic standards for online instruction? Do no harm isn't sustainable for the long term. I mentioned that earlier that we'll look, look to the fall for distance learning as we continue in this model for those that need to stay in that model longer. We'll make sure that we're improving upon that and looking at the policies, what worked and what didn't, didn't work. Um, so appreciate that very much. Um, you guys are all asking the right questions. Um, Molly, I agree with you. She says it's important to give multiple options to families about the fall soon. Parents are looking at other options. State guidance coming out today was critically important, and we're going as quickly as we can on that, Molly. That's why the day after the state budget is passed on the 15th and 16th is when we have our workshop. We've been having um, focus groups, and it's not like we're waiting for the budget and then we'll decide the next day. All of our focus groups are leading up to that, so the options are very clear, very, clear, very quickly, so our families are really aware of that. Um, sorry, Rachel, you said you got skipped. What plans are in the works to support and upgrade technology for staff and students? We have a continuous policy around upgrading our technology, so if you have computers that aren't working, we've increased our help desk and our support line, so if we need, if you have a Computer that's not working, please let us know so we can get that fixed for you and give you one that is working. And Claudia wants to know if prime time will be available when kids go back to school. That's also part of our planning to make sure that kids have uh, the availability if they need additional support. It's all within the social distancing guidelines, though, that we need to put that together. And we'll, as soon as we have those plans, we will tell you we, by mid-June you should know. Um, exactly what that's going to look like going forward. So we're getting closer and closer with all of the key questions being answered at the state and local level, and state guidance then gets interpreted at the um, at the local at the local level here with with San Diego County Health Authority guidance as well. And Benchley Weinberger, Anthony Anthony is saying best huge shout out to the best elementary school teaching and support staff on the planet at Benchley Weinberger. I think Anthony, you're going to start a little competition on here, but I, we will make sure eventually Weinberger hears about that. Thank you. Okay, so I know we're getting close to time to wrap up. Again, the questions that come in during this 30-minute period, we're going to go back and answer them. As you know, tomorrow would be would have been the last day of school for 90% of our schools, and so I will be. I won't be on Facebook Live for a couple of weeks, and as we get closer to opening up the school year, we'll start this again. This has been really a great way for us to interact and for us to hear questions directly from you about what you're thinking about, what's front of mind for you, and how we can help. So 
Uh, more things coming forward, consistency and stability is super important moving forward. And I know we're getting closer and closer to that and the guidelines are coming out. So please everybody take good care of yourself and know that we'll be continuing to improve upon what we've learned so far in distance learning as we get into distance learning 2.0 and make improvements on that. And I see a lot more shout outs out there from people to your schools. If I didn't mention your school, I see Juarez, I see Hickman. If I don't, didn't say your school, don't worry, we'll go back and read them and we'll make sure to send them over to the school. And I appreciate it. I'll read every single one of them. Thank you everybody for joining. And I think my mom and my son also joined. So I want to say hi to them as well. And my friend, um, I heard someone from Colorado join. So we've got people all over the country. Thank you everybody. Hope you have a wonderful day. Please stay, stay safe and it's going to be hot today. So stay hydrated hydrated, and hi to Hilda as well. Thank you everybody. Oh, Hilda, glad, glad you were here. I can just say hi all morning. Anyway, no, we got to sign off. Everybody stay hydrated and stay well. Take care. Bye-bye.